Roberts. This is Pastor Mike Hoggard, pastor of Bethel Church in Festus, Missouri, and head of prophetic research ministry with another Watchman video broadcast. I had somebody ask me one time, uh, how, how do you put all this together? I mean, how do you decide what you're going to throw into the Watchman broadcast every week? <clears throat> and I was, I didn't know how to answer the question. A lot of times it just shows up. And that's the case this week. Somebody had sent me, there's several things that I'm going to uh, include that people have sent me. But there was a fascinating article I read concerning, and I want you to take a look at this image here. This is, uh, you probably have seen this before. Uh, it's quiz time. Uh, who knows who painted this picture? I'm going to give you the count of three. One, two, three. Three. If you said Leonardo da Vinci, you're wrong. It wasn't Leonardo da Vinci. It was Michelangelo. Um, question number two. Where was it drawn? Give you a count of three. One, two, three. If you said Bethel Church in Festus, Missouri, you're wrong again. Uh, it's in the Sistine Chapel. Where is the Sistine Chapel? It is... In the Vatican. What is the Vatican? It is its own country. It is the headquarters of, you know, that great bastion of Christian doctrine, the Roman Catholic Church. Not uh, the Roman Catholic Church is, and don't ever forget this, don't believe what the eye candy that you see and don't believe the people that are around you that are Catholic. The Roman Catholic Church is the largest mystery religion that exists on planet earth. This is not a Christian organization. How do I know? Number one, that pesky idol worshiping thing that they do. I mean, I just, I mean, I have a biblical problem with that. You're not supposed to make statues and pray to them. They say, oh, that's not what we're doing. Well, it looks like that's what they're doing and that's what they're doing. Um, number two, they have a head of their church that believes he's Jesus. He is called the Vicar of Christ. In other words, the, re the replacement of Jesus Christ. What, what he says goes. If the Pope, Il Papa, if he says something that uh, is not in the Bible, or if he says something that contradicts the Bible, <laughs> then obviously the Bible's wrong and Il Papa, the Pope, is right. Uh, if you ever get a copy, uh, you can probably find this anywhere online, if you get a copy of the Catholic Catechism, go look at their version of the Ten Commandments. For, for some strange reason, they've omitted the commandment that says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any great... They just took it out. They didn't listen. You know what? We don't like that one. So they took it out. So anyway, here we have this image here that uh, is the sort of the, the center point or the, the focal point of all of the artwork that Michelangelo did. By the way, Michelangelo was not just a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Um, all the artwork that Michelangelo did on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel and on the background of the Sistine Chapel, all that work that he did, this one seems to get, I mean, this image is always stuck in our mind. It is the image, supposedly now, supposedly, of it is called God giving life to Adam. Now, Remember what I said earlier about the Roman Catholic Church and how they're, they're not really Christian, okay? They call themselves Christian. They say Jesus a lot. They have a Bible, kind of, but they're not really Christian. A lot of things that's going on inside the Vatican are unbiblical, and they always reference Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and abominations to the earth. In other words, mystery religions. You will find mystery doctrines inside the Catholic Church. Um, Dan Brown writes the Da Vinci Code. This is not the Da Vinci Code. He writes the Da Vinci Code and he makes it look like that the Roman Catholic Church is just, oh, they're just so, uh, they're up so totally against this saying about Mary Magdalene being the wife of Jesus and uh, how, how dare they do that? They, how dare they make Mary Magdalene equal with Jesus? Uh, how, how dare they do that? Well, Roman Catholicism has been worshipping a woman named Mary now for about 1,500 years. I mean, they're like the ringleaders in it. And so they are a mystery doctrine, a mystery religion. And I want you to keep that in mind. 
because what you see in one place in Mystery Babylon, if you look someplace else in Mystery Babylon, that's what you're going to see as well. You're going to see her just about everywhere. And that's kind of what we're going to look at today. I, I read an article this week that just, it, when I started thinking about it, looking at it, it just absolutely fascinated me. So I want you to, I want you to take a look at, again at this picture here. And I want you to notice, here we have Adam. And uh, then we have uh, a painted image of God, quote unquote. And there's all kinds of little business going around him there. So just kind of focus on that for a minute. And and of course, we remember we said earlier that this was supposedly the, uh, the picture that depicted God giving Adam life. Now, I... I'm just glad we have a Bible. I, I am. I. Uh, the more you watch this broadcast, the more you will understand from me that the Bible is the referee in all the arguments. It is the judge. It is the executioner. It is everything. Our doctrine here at this church, you want to know our doctrinal statement? It's Genesis 1 through Revelation 22. That's our doctrinal statement. The Bible solves all the arguments. It puts down all the dissension. The Bible does everything. It is the truth. It is the way and it is the life. You say, oh, Jesus said that. You're making the Bible equal to Jesus. See, I'm not even doing that either because the Bible already does that. He is called the Word of God. And you cannot separate the God, Jesus Christ, from His Word. You cannot separate them. And so when I, I've been accused, I've been accused of being a Bible worshiper, therefore, you're an idol worshiper. No. This is the only image of God allowed anywhere on the earth. This is it right here. This is the image of God Almighty, Jesus Christ. And this Bible is everything. And when I say this Bible, you know, you know that I'm not pointing to my New King James Version of the Bible. I'm pointing to my King James Version of the Bible. I believe that it's right. And so remember this now. Roman Catholicism or the Pope or Michelangelo says one thing. And they say this image of God doing this to Adam is how God gave life to Adam. That ain't it. Let's go to the Bible. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed a man of the dust of the ground. And watch this. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. <laughs> and man became a living soul. Now I'm, I'm, I'm laughing here because I don't know about you, but I have never ever breathed out my finger. I, I never have. So this image here, it, it's just funny to me, this image here of God touching the fingertip of Adam and saying, now you have breath, now you have life, that's absolutely ridiculous. And so we know automatically, right now, we know that this image, get that, this image is unbiblical. That's not how God gave life to man. It wasn't. Now I want you to... Boy, I want you to think about this for a minute. Because we're going to be dealing with something here in a little bit that when you see this, your eyes are going to shoot out of your head. Okay? God put this thing together. God even led me to the scripture verses we're going to use in this thing. And you're going to see something that... Um, wow. I think it will blow you away like it did me. Uh, but anyway, we're going to be dealing with uh, some things where touch is important. The touch, the touch, the touch. Uh, just think about things like that. We've dealt with in this broadcast several times about uh, Shakti and how you can transfer illumination to somebody in the New Age movement or in Eastern mysticism. How you can transfer a spirit into somebody by touching them. Okay, This is why the Apostle Paul tells us, lay hands on no man suddenly. In other words, you be careful about who's coming by bopping you on the head. Okay, Don't let anybody do that. But here this image here of God giving life to Adam by giving him this touch. And you've seen this image used, I mean if you, if you Google this or whatever search engine you use, uh, you can find out all kinds of images, some of them not so good to look at. Uh, here's one of them. Uh, was an ad for Absolute Vodka. Um, vodka is, I think it's like a potato-based liquor. And um, 
Anyway, it's using this touch of God to Adam, and the connection point here is this bottle of liquor. And you say, that's ridiculous. Just hang on a minute, okay? Just hang on a minute because it was it was just interesting to me. I don't I'm not making some big deal about this, but it was interesting to me that alcohol and this touch that we're going to talk about, they have a lot in common. I mean, they really really do. So I thought this was interesting. Um I remember several years ago uh, when uh, I was just kind of surfing the web and I, I noticed that somebody had written an article about how this touch of God giving life to Adam was mirrored in the promotion of a film done by Steven Spielberg. Now I'm going to stop right here for a minute. Steven Spielberg hates Jesus Christ. He hates Christianity. He hates everything about it. He mocks everything about Christianity and the Bible. Let me give you an example. And I've talked about this in some of our other videos. Um, if you've ever watched Close Encounters of the Third Kind, what you see here is a, is a mirror image of God calling His people to Mount Sinai and visiting with them. Uh, what you, because what you see is God calls, or excuse me, the mother aliens, the mothership, beckons 12 people, 12 tribes, uh, to not the mountain of God, but Devil's Tower, Wyoming, brings them there. Even, even embedded in the movie, there's some kids watching television in the background, and guess what they're watching? Charlton Heston and the Ten Commandments. You can hear them. Mom, the Ten Commandments are on. They're telling you something, okay? And so they, they go, and here this man uh, has an encounter, a, thir- a close encounter of the third kind, with the mothership, okay? It's all, and then he ascends up. I don't like Moses, okay? Um, so anyway, uh, there's that imagery there, and Steven Spielberg did this in his movie, E.T. And I want you to get a hold of this here. Look at the imagery here. Here is this, and I want you to I want you to follow me here. Focus right here, okay? Okay. Here he is E. T. He is a god because he has all these amazing abilities, and he falls down to the earth. How how art thou fallen from heaven? Oh, Lucifer, Lucifer means light bearer. Take a look then at the image here. So he falls to the earth, these, all these little children, because you know children, they'll accept this. The grown-ups don't do this. And the evil government wants to uh, put this away. But the children are following the light bearer here in this movie. And the light bearer dies. But, and of course Drew Barrymore goes, <laughs> Okay. But he comes back to life. And just before he ascends up into the, the heavens, okay, I hope you're getting this. It's a mockery is what it is. But E.T. is a picture of Lucifer, the light bearer. How it thou fallen? Now he's going to ascend up into the heavens. But before he does... Watch, watch what he does. Okay, now this this um, this imagery here that you see on the on the advertisement for ET is meant to show the connection or the the connecting point, the fusing point uh, between the God ET and the little boy Elliot. I think is what his name is, giving him illumination or giving him life. Now, just kind of get this all in your mind here, because this is where we're going. But I want you to I want you to take a look now at this at at this part of the movie where where the light bearer ET is fixing to go back up into the stars look at watch watch what he does watch this 